everyone. Welcome to this edition of The Public Square. I'm Wayne Shepard here with a full table, a whole team available to you today. Uh, Rob Walgate is here. Our producer is Alan C. Duncan. Dave Zanotti is here, of course. Sherry Eisen, Anna Welch, and Jeff Sanders. Now, Dave, recently on our long-form weekend program, The Public Square, we talked about abortion. Is it more than politics? And we kind of ran out of time, didn't we? <laughs> we didn't run out of data or energy. No. And in fact, Wayne, I, was, I, I wasn't I was sure getting into the show because I know people are saturated with this conversation and the temptation is to turn away from it. But I think we need to walk into this and ask the Holy Spirit, where is the light of the Word of God? Where is the power of the Holy Spirit? Excellent. What are we called to do? And so that's what we're in the middle of. And we're just inviting all the listeners to come right along with us because you're walking right into what a public policy organization does you know, they don't call them think tanks for nothing. And we're yeah. trying to think through what does the scripture say? What does our constitution afford to us? What is our personal responsibility in love to neighbor? And how do we do this the right way? Mm-hmm. Or do we just hide behind the barrels? I feel like I'm, I'm suddenly at a rodeo circus and, we're, and, and like it, it, everybody's a circus clown. <laughs> They're trying to hide from the bull behind the barrels, right? Who are you calling You gotta get out there. <laughs> yeah, right? This, we, we, we've got to get this out in the light where we can talk about it. So that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Well, even if you didn't hear our previous discussion, this will be valuable. But if you want to go back and listen to it, of course, it's online at thepublicsquare.com. Look for Is Abortion More Than Politics? Okay, Dave, let's start. One of the things we mentioned in our long format broadcast, I brought it up and I'm willing to stand on it, is the fact that I keep watching the current administration, whether it's parts of the administrative state, whether it's the spokespeople, whether it's the president of the United States, they will not use the word abortion. They talk about everything other than that, reproductive rights, reproductive freedom. They will not use the word abortion. Why not? Isn't it time we put the issue squarely on the table and ask, what is this? What's the history? How do we build consensus and how to resolve this problem? They don't want to talk about it because they want to use it as politics. They want to use it to influence the outcome of an election. That is so pathetically short-sighted since we've been having this debate for, I don't know, about 6,000 years of human history. It doesn't get solved in one vote. So the responsible position, I think, is to dig into this. Now, what's fascinating to me is Bill Maher is a comedian that a lot of people are aware of. He's got the HBO uh, program, and people are aware. He's very opinionated and very articulate with his opinion. He doesn't have any problem with talking about abortion out loud. So this is a clip from Bill Maher's program. He's talking to two people, and the first one you'll hear is Pierce Morgan, and then you'll hear Maher's response. Europe, for example, by comparison, the 60 countries of Europe, actually there are many countries in Europe where it's completely illegal to have an abortion. Poland, Malta, you know, places like Andorra, you know. So, uh, and if you look at Germany and France and countries like that, it can be 10, 12 weeks is the term limit that you're allowed to have an abortion legally. So America is not, such an outlier. It does go to the states. I think a lot of Americans on the left do think that this is somehow a really unique American problem or an issue that only pertains to them in terms of the legality of abortions. Actually, comparative to Europe, it's not massively dissimilar. But the thing that's crazy is at a time when America is facing so many huge geopolitical threats, um, where there's a huge tech revolution going on, where the economy is faced with all kinds of challenges. The idea that you're fighting an election around this issue um, seems to be, you know, just strange. Back to the 19th century. Well, not, not if you believe it's murder. You know, that's why I don't understand the 15-week thing. Or the Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women, people who aren't pro-life, they, uh, pro-choice. They, just, they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder. And it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry. We won't miss you. That's my position on that. what. That's quite harsh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not is sure that not your question. position if you're pro-choice? Isn't that mainly because you don't like children? I mean, yeah, no, exactly. no. I mean, 
<laughs> but if you are, if you said you're pro-choice. Mm. That's your position too. Mm. So Bill Maher, who I actually like Bill Maher, just for the record, and he has come a long way in many good ways, I think, over the past 15 or 20 years. He's, he comes out and says, they, that is the pro-life people, believe that abortion is murder. And then he says, and it kind of is. Now, for a precise thinker, I would like to ask Bill Maher, so the people who are getting abortions, are they kind of pregnant? Or are they actually pregnant? I, there's no such thing as, well, I'm, I'm kind, are you pregnant or not? Well, a little bit. No, you either are or you are not. And so it either is murder or it is not. I am glad, however, he confronted, uh, who was it, Pierce Morgan? Pierce, Pierce Morgan. Morgan. And threw that on the table and said, well, you're pro-choice, right? And Pierce Morgan goes, uh-huh, yeah. He said, well, th that's what you believe. And then he justifies eliminating certain people. Of course, Bill Maher wants to stick around. No, but he doesn't want anybody eliminating him, even if we have too many people on the planet, yeah. which I think is rather hypocritical. But Well, and I think it's also, we've had many programs where we talk about the fact that the population numbers are actually decreasing. Yeah, so, many, so many countries across the globe are not at replacement yeah. level. So, him doing trotting out the old population density thing is is very out of step with the actual reality on the ground yeah, right now. And there is a like when he's talking about in Europe, and he mentioned one large nation and then two small nations. Uh, Italy is you can't just walk into an abortion clinic in Italy and get an abortion. It's highly restrictive. So Bill Maher says out loud, and you can hear a pin drop when he says it. That's the way one person reported it online. Well, it's murder. Now, that's tough talk. Yeah. That's tough talk. Abortion is the termination of a human life. When you understand what it is, and Bill Maher clearly understands what it is, then you have to decide how as an individual do you want to live in a world in which this is happening? Do you want it to be safe, legal, and rare? Do you want it to be only to protect the life of the mother and the health of the mother? In which case, it moves from murder to a subset of the right to life, which is understood to be self-defense. Now, every time I bring that up, some people will write and say, no, 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 no. The child is not the enemy. Of course, the child is not the enemy. But if you understand the concept of the right to life, it contains the right to protect one's body in the event that a choice has to be made. And in this situation, all of the laws in America that are pro-life laws have always included the right for of self-protection for the mother under the, the very nature of the right to life. So it, 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 it's, and then you also have the question about abortion is murder, okay? Then you have the situation where you, you start talking about fetal abnormalities and situations where inevitably the child is going to perish in the womb. And it may be in such a situation that it puts the mother's life at risk as well. So is it moral to say what we need is two deaths, not one? See, there are nuances in this discussion from a biblical and a legal point of view that makes sense. But Bill Maher is courageous enough to call it what he believes it is. It's murder, and he's fine with that. He also says he's fine with the person that says it's murder, and I'm not fine with that. Hmm. And I happen to be one of those people. I'm not fine with that. And I think our organization is in the same boat. We all feel that way. Yes. Could you imagine that statement being made on television, on a streaming platform about any other group of human beings? Mm. Mm. Any other group. It, I'm okay with murdering them because there's too many people already. Could you imagine somebody saying that? People who, are, uh, who have Alzheimer's, right? Let's just get rid of them because they're a drain, right? But name any, pick any grouping that, that is viewed to be helpless in society in some way. We came close during the age of eugenics. Yeah. And isn't that so amazing, the biblical worldview that says when God made man and woman, he made 
them in his own image. And each person throughout the entire universe, through all history, is unique and made in his image and therefore valuable. And he also said then um, to be fruitful and multiply. Hmm. So he, he wanted us to continue to regenerate ourselves. Mm-hmm. But to just try to, you know, wipe out, oh, there's too many people in the world. Well, Alan already debunked that. We've talked about that on the show already. There, yeah. Lots of populations are not going to be replacing themselves. But but isn't it, I, I have so much hope in the biblical worldview because it's, it just is showing that you are you are valuable. No matter who you are, you are valuable. Right. Even if we did think there were too many people, that still wouldn't make it okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Well, this is a continuation of our discussion about uh, abortion. Is it more than politics? And these programs, if you miss any part of this uh, conversation, it's all online at thepublicsquare.com, and I urge you to listen there. But there's more to come today. We'll get to it after a, a brief break here on The Public Square. people and organizations like Americans United for the Separation of Church and State that actually believe that reading of the Declaration of Independence in public schools is somehow un-American. How did America ever come to this? If you're tired of standing on the sidelines while others rewrite the Declaration and the Constitution, please join us in spreading the light of liberty across the land. To learn how to contribute to the work of the American Policy Roundtable, please call us today at 800 522 vote. Don't just get mad, make a difference. Call us today, 1-800-522-VOTE. Every day, 535 people are charged with representing all of us in Washington, D.C. They preside over the largest budget in the world. They hold the Constitution in their hands. They can help protect our liberties or look the other way. 535 people we put them in office, isn't it time that we hold them in our prayers? A public service message from the American Policy Roundtable. Spreading the light of liberty across the land. Now back to the public square. Let's continue the conversation now in the public square today. The topic is abortion more than politics. And I, I got to tell you, I, I mentioned this earlier in one of our programs, Dave, but I don't know where else on stations like this you're going to get this kind of conversation. So thank you for bringing it to us today. Well, we're trying, Wayne. We've been in the public policy business in a mission on public policy for 44 years. We're not going anywhere, but wherever the Lord says, go next. And, and we firmly believe that when Jesus rose from the dead and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me, that that includes the authority over heaven and earth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the people and law who dwell in it. Jesus has real answers for real questions. The difference is this. He doesn't force us to do the right thing. He permits us to choose to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, we don't. Now, what we see is America is now at a crossroads. When Roe fell, that was 50 years of prayer and protest. Now we've got to move to the arena of governance. What do you build in its place? How do you build a structure that is built on consensus and the consent of the governed? How do we prevail in the public debate? Not by compulsion or by force or by jamming anything down anybody's throat. Now, we are very far apart on this in many ways. So there are some things that are going to take much longer to resolve. 
But there's, I think, a great deal of hope when people understand what's actually happening in the real statistical world of abortion. And we covered that in the last program, that you can see this problem is easier to solve than people realize. I don't think that any girl growing up says, I can't wait to have an abortion. Mm. This is not something that people view as a virtue, but the politicians are trying to sell us that it's now virtuous, that it's now a part of the American ethos. No, no. George Washington said this, laws can never make just what is in its nature unjust. And a law can't fix this problem completely either. So we're in a difficult zone. We've got a lot of things to think about in this regard. So um, l- let's talk about the fact that Bill Maher is being honest. He's willing to call abortion what it is. He calls it murder. And he's uncontested. And he has the courage to say to other, pro-life, uh, other pro-abortion people, well, <laughs> you may be finessing this, but it's what you believe too. He also recognizes that pro-life people don't hate women. They just don't like murder. There's something in the injustice of this that haunts us, and it has. So how do we deal with it more effectively? That's that's the real question. The problem, and, and, and Alan and Jeff brought up really good points in the last segment. When Marr is willing to say, and he's not alone, he's just being honest. Look, there's plenty of people in the world. Yes, it's murder. On paper, I'm philosophically just fine with that because we got too many people. Anyhow, not my problem, your problem. And he could, I'm not going to put any more words in his mouth. All right. Not my, he, he's fine with it. That is the pathway of flatlining the conscience of the people of America. Wow. Once you go there, where do you go next? Jeff made the comment about Alzheimer's patients. Mm-hmm. What about the severely handicapped? What about mm-hmm. special needs children? Now, you see how quickly we, we, we descend down that slope. Now, we've already got an administration that won't even call abortion abortion. They want to call it a right. We've already got Planned Parenthood saying we should be building temples in our constitutions to abortion and celebrating it by enshrining it. You see, this is not going in a very healthy direction. So the question I've got ahead, we, we talked about this in, in, in the earlier broadcast, but we ran out of time. What's the Bible say about human life? We just pointed out a couple of our favorite verses I mean, but there's amazing verses about human life and, and, and conception and life in the womb and the value of life in the womb. Think of all the people who could have been con, uh, uh, considered impossible babies or miracle babies, people who never should have gotten pregnant who got pregnant in the Bible. And they, they believe it was an answer to prayer. I mean, think about uh, Samuel, right? I mean, you could, you, could, you could go throughout the Old Testament. Well, how did Jeremiah describe his, his calling and, and his commissioning from God from the womb. Wayne, you mentioned uh, the words of King David in Psalm 139, fearfully and wonderfully made. We talked about St. Paul saying that he was set apart by God from his mother's womb for the mission he was given to. I can't get over Gabriel telling Elizabeth that mm-hmm. that her child, John the Baptist, was going to be filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. It's clear that the Bible, Old Testament and New, has, is, is clear about this question. And we can talk about these scriptures in the Bible that tell us that, and then we can be use the benefit of modern technology today to look inside the womb at earlier and earlier time periods of pregnancy and see that formation and cre- creation of life that's in there. And it, that, I mean, my children were born 15 years ago and 12 years ago, respectively, and the amount of technology improvement in ultrasounds in the past, in the past fifteen years since they were since I saw them is amazing to me. I look at pictures now and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me! Yeah. How can you deny that's a child? Yeah, you see, you see that you see the children of the womb sucking their thumb. You see them recoiling from light and and from pain. Uh, so you you can't say that there's not a personality there inside the womb. When did you become you? <laughs> were you you? when you were in the womb, or did it happen sometime after you made the exit? So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what do we do? And I think that subset question is really, what is our ability to persevere in the midst of the storm? Because this is a big 
storm going across our country. People in Arizona know this. It is People in Ohio just went through it. People in seven other states have been through it. People in Florida are facing Amendment 4. I mean, this is a huge political storm. It's one of the biggest plays the progressive left have, has ever made to, to, to attempt to influence the outcome of an election is to take abortion and inflate it into this giant lightning and thunderstorm and bring it across the country. Where is the truth in all of this? That's the question. Does Jesus Christ have real answers to this real question? And what are we supposed to do? I think more than does he have answers, he he is the answer when he says, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, I can't say that. I am not the truth. I can find the truth, but he is the truth. What if we just embraced children are a blessing from the Lord? You know, there are many times my children are driving me nuts. I'm in the early <laughs> ages, and I'm like, just, just really, Lord, that's what you said? <laughs> children are a blessing from the Lord. Tell me again, Lord. Tell me again. I know. Tell me. I need it, God. I need it. <laughs> so what if, as a society, we embrace that children are a gift, not a curse? Also, one little tidbit to when we were talking about Bible verses of, you know, the whole Bible talking about life and and births and pregnancies. God is not unfamiliar with an unplanned pregnancy. His son was born that way, and he's very adamantly acquainted with an unplanned pregnancy. And he tells Mary and the angel of the Lord that she is blessed, not cursed. She has, It's a blessing to have that pregnancy. Amen. You're going to make me cry, Anna. I was an unplanned pregnancy, born to an unwed mother. And Wayne, you were also adopted. I was. You're the full circle. Adopted by earthly parents and adopted by God in Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. And later in life, you also, in, in addition to blessing your wonderful family that raised you, you actually were reunited with yeah. some of your other family yeah. members. I was readopted by my original biological family. Wayne, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to bring that up, but Anna, when you said what you said, I mean, that's... Um, I'm so you know, glad to know you. I I was born in the 50s, and abortion was available, of course, to women in the 50s. And here was a young woman in her early 20s who was not married and suddenly found herself with a child. Now, she was sent away secretly to have the baby and returned home and never told anybody. It was only in recent years that the story has come out, but but at least she went through with it. Amen. And God does work all these things for good, and we we see it as time goes on. Um, It is such a blessing. If you've ever read the story called The Waiting, it's very similar to that. And uh, from many years ago of a a woman that had to, she was raped, and she had to give up her baby. And um, when she was in her 90s, she was reunited and was just astounded at the blessing of the child that she did not want to give up. So God is at work in our lives, and these stories are are more common than we realize. Yeah. So there's an impression, and again, at least Bill Maher has the honesty of saying he respects people who take this as seriously as we do. He understands. He disagrees completely. For him, it's murder, and he's fine with it. All right. Okay. And, and so now, again, some of that might be some rhetorical comfort zone for him as well, as far as building a space where he doesn't have to think about it quite as thoroughly because he shocked everyone in what he said. Well, And he is a comedian as well. It could be some very dark humor he's trying to, mm. you know, put out there. But what, what isn't funny is the fact that this isn't going away anytime soon. We've talked about the biblical call to persevere. Jeff, how do you define the biblical call of perseverance? Uh, the most common Greek word is hupomene, which means to remain under. To stand literal. up under. Yeah, mm-hmm. hupo, under, and mene means to remain. And so it's just uh, remaining and being faithful and enduring. And in fact, it's translated that way many times, patient endurance or endurance in a very uncomfortable situation. Staying with the stuff, being faithful. Yeah, it doesn't mean that we that that the pro life community is going to win every battle. Uh, we might lose some. Yep. We might yep. lose more. But but the 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 justice of this issue will never be silenced. And I think George Washington got it right. Law can never make 
just what is in its nature unjust, as long as there's someone willing to call out for justice. Scripture teaches us there's a God who hears. So let's stand for the truth. We know what uh, what the Bible says. We know what God thinks, and we need to reflect that in our world, don't we? Thank you, team. Thank you for the conversation today about abortion. Not a happy topic, but one that needs addressing in our culture. You've been listening to The Public Square. Public Square is a broadcast service of the American Policy Roundtable.